Roy joins the Army Cadet Force because he has some sort of interest in the Army, some sort of interest in discipline, in uniform, in shooting. And all these things are part and parcel of the Army Cadet Force. You couldn't have the Army Cadet Force without these things. <laughs> I've never, in my experience, ever found a cadet who's been harmed by things like discipline or a little bit of uh, military training. The boys want it, and I think they enjoy having it. Squid rules a necessity, whether, whether they like it or not, because you just can't take a, a bunch of cadets about in a rabble. They've got to learn to march. They, they start off hating it, but uh, eventually, as they find they're picking it up, then to get more interested and want to learn more complicated movements and eventually the rifle drop. Uh, I think it, it varies from unit to unit how much sport as opposed to military training is practiced within the unit. Uh, in our unit it tends to be more the military side that we concentrate on, mainly because the cadets like the military side more and they moan if, they, if they're given football or anything like that, whereas if they're offered an exercise, they jump at it. That's what they want to do, they want to go out and practice field fit. Stop! Bangrove! Section of time! Last flag! Wait, three stop! Go! I joined the ACF, what, about 12 years ago now, when I saw an advert in the paper. I decided to apply not thinking of commissions or rank or anything. I thought basically that I'd like to put something back that I took out many years ago. It's just gone on from there. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought that I was going to be putting stuff in, but in fact I'm still taking out. I have a hell of a lot of fun. On the board we have the three points A, B and C. The first one A194907. Find it on your map, plot it, Bring it and mark it A. When you join the ACF, either as an officer or as an adult instructor, you're normally sent on a week's course down in Surrey. Good morning, gentlemen, and welcome to the Cadet Training Centre, Frunley Park. I hope you'll enjoy your week's course with us and that we can help you become first-rate instructors. These courses are very good. They give you training in instruction as well as in basic military skills and also they give you a chance to meet chaps who've come from other parts of the country and have had different kinds of experience. I needed a bit of in outside interest and of course the only background I've got is gunnery work. And so I came along to the ACF and found to my surprise they had a gun which I was able to use. This morning we're going off to do some hill walking and I want you to have a look at the kit we've got laid out here. It shows you what you've got to take as individuals. We're trying to get the balance between not being all military and marching about everywhere and still having informal things like adventurous training. Look back, look up. Now where are you going to go? Good. Adventure go training down. involves risk and we have to be very, very safety conscious. Have very strict rules. So we place the responsibility onto the boy that he is going to obey the instructions we are going to give them before they ever get into that environment. Sit. Now stretch. Sit. Back on the legs. While the boy is working in the town doing map and compass work within the confines of the headquarters, he can make the odd mistake now and again and he generally tends to confer with his partner. But once you bring him out of the town, out of the city, bring him up to Wales, give him the map oh. and compass, put him on a hillside, and find that he really hasn't got anyone to confer with, and he's got to make the decision whether yeah. to go right or left. And a wrong decision can mean, what, an hour, an hour and a half walking, pretty sore feet and legs at the end of the day. He simply realise what it's all about. I think they gain an awful lot of confidence 
from many, many varied activities that they take part in. It's a very wide field that's offered to them. They don't have to take part in them all, and all units don't offer all these activities. But at the end of it, whatever standard of achievement, I'm sure any boy will come out with far more confidence than he went in with. <laughs> Safety okay, line okay, carabiner okay. Carry on. This is when the boys realise what fear is when you ask them to step off a 65 feet rock face backwards. Everybody experiences fear when you do it, so they're stupid if they don't. Tell them in their training if you can go over a 60 foot cliff, you can do anything. I think the ACF has allowed me to do lots of things that I wouldn't have done if I hadn't joined. And it's a whole range of subjects that normally I wouldn't have a chance to do. Whereas in the cadets I had a chance to sample them all. And those that I don't like I can usually shy away from. The Royal Green Jackets hold more VCs than any other infantry regiment. And here we have an exhibit of particular interest to us. A bugle belonging to Captain Dimmer VC, past member of the cadet battalion. Kerry Hun, I'm certain you'd like to uh, handle, maybe sound, this very famous bugle. Okay. Well, the band was formed by a commander who had a, an inclination to start a band, and then it followed on from there. He, he's got musical interest, but no skill in it. He can't read music, and he can't even play a bugle. But he can still produce all the buglers just by talking to them. He can get them to play, because none of them can read music, and so they have to write it all out as A, B, C, D's, and E's and pass it on and memorise it. So it's quite a difficult thing and they have to practice at it quite a bit. In cadets we don't do all military training. We have a balance Carry roughly on. between the two. We do things like drill and shooting, but also we do citizenship and first aid. Right. So I can't leave. Cool. Go and deal with this one. It's all welch. Deal with on. There's a leg down there. We think that first aid training is very important in the ACF because our boys, at so some time, sooner or later, will become involved in a situation where knowledge of first aid is essential, be it a road accident or someone at school tripping over and hurting themselves. Right. Just going to have a little look in there, right? Okay. What about the gentleman behind the wheel? Well, he went in and had a look first, saw what was wrong, and then he moved him back very gently. All right, so this is the first realistic exercise you've dealt with yeah, um, simulated cavalry, yeah. and you've done quite well. What about One of our sergeant instructors took a first aid course, and that came in very handy when he was at the Hilton Hotel when the bomb went off, because there was an Arab man who had, below his knee, his leg cut off, and he did direct pressure and he stopped the flow of blood and the man was saved. You see a cadet coming in, he seems like any other boy and uh, within a, a few months he seems to have developed a great deal. He knows exactly where he's placed. He says, right, here I am, I'm a recruit. Now if I do so and so and so and so and so and so, I shall gradually progress through from my first star and I can become an NCO. He's got a future mapped out for him that he can readily identify. Raise and eat the fetress. O oh God, our Father, who has brought us together as members of the Army Cadet Force. It's a very secure atmosphere, I think, for youngsters to come in, as opposed to perhaps a non-uniformed organisation where he attends and takes part in table tennis or whatever, but there isn't the progression that we've got. And I think this is what boys enjoy, being able to come in and to achieve and see that they're achieving in a competitive spirit. To have good morale in a cadet unit, you have to have a sense of achievement. A boy has to feel part of an overall unit. He has to have a unit identity. They have to compete in competitions to work well with themselves, with their own colleagues, and, with, and to compete and work with other units. Okay, go. Okay, go. Okay, go. Okay, go. Okay, go.
In my own particular detachment, we tend to take a cross-section. We don't mind if he's old fatty or he's a 13-year-old beanpole. Uh, we don't go out to cater essentially for the military gladiators. What we like to think is that the military gladiator will appreciate that poor old fatty puffing up the hill has got some problems and that he's going to make allowances. I think it's very much a caring community where people are encouraged to think about other people. Well, I think the most enjoyable thing I've done was uh, last year at manual camp. And we um, had to do it, take our two-star adventure training. It was quite tiring, but I, I enjoyed a lot of it because it's good fresh air and there's no town smoke or anything around. And you just, there's no cars to clutter the countryside up and you can just walk and walk and enjoy all of it. I think I enjoyed that bit the most. We, we get quite a number of kids who come from deprived homes, particularly in the London area, and I think that they, they get out of family life that they may not be getting at home. Perhaps dad is missing or mum is missing. They're getting that family life, mixing with other lads, and they've got to mix if they're really going to get some fun out of it. And I think they do. They start laughing. You get very many boys who come in and they're very quiet, haven't got much to say for themselves. And before long, you suddenly see them in the canteen joking and laughing with the other lads out in the field, even at the top of the mountain. They very often become the jokers of the of the unit in no time at all. The main advantage to boys coming from underprivileged homes is not that the cadets do anything particular for them, but just they meet other boys from different backgrounds and together, once they're in uniform, they all seem the same. They don't notice their different backgrounds and I think when they get older, they accept everybody else as they are. We get a cross-section of, of youth from young people in very secure homes to boys who are in difficult or distressed homes. We've got boys here who perhaps for the first time in a few weeks are away from a home where the parents are continually in dispute. Well, here they are away from that atmosphere and on their own. And uh, for difficult or distressed youngsters coming in, they can immediately identify and feel secure. Here's a family set up, if you like. They know what's required of them. They know what we want to do. I think immediately, you know, they've got this feeling of security. Put that down. This afternoon, we will be doing section battle drills. This ridge will be the defended location. We do get uh, critics who say, oh, look at that lot there, teaching kids to handle guns, teaching them to shoot at other people, and so on and so forth. Well, to those sort of people, I say, go to a fairground. See what's one of the most popular stands with any children. People who've not come in contact with the army at all. To my mind, kids have automatically got an interest in weapons and shooting. So far as that aspect is concerned, I make no apology. And as for things like mock battles and fighting patrols, to the boys it's an adventure. It's not a something that they're looking forward to doing in real life. In 20 odd years of experience, I can't think of a single boy who's got in trouble with the police. And the police have said to me, of course you know where he learned all those techniques, on your exercises. Tomorrow is the day you've been waiting for when you will be leaving Ebervale to go to Berlin, where you will be attached to the Welsh Guards in Wavell Barracks. Berlin is a very important city, and you will see lots of things there that you have read about in the papers, heard about on the television, and uh, 
which you would never hope to see possibly. You will see the Berlin Wall, Checkpoint Charlie, various other important things in the city. Remember your behavior. You are the ambassadors of the Army Cadet Force, and as such, you will be judged by your behavior. Right, are there any questions? they take you on the bus or in Land Rovers around the various points of attraction so that you can you know, see them properly and even be a kind of guide to tell you all about them, about the different monuments, what the status is and what they've done in the war, etc. You can see the checkpoint just down there with the East German Guardsmen now looking at us. The wall, as you can see, runs in front of us. We'll just go now and have a look over it. Here we get a good view of the checkpoint, checkpoint Charlie in front. See the cars coming in and out, East German Guards. You can see the wall runs along in front of us. And here we can also, you can also see the uh, defences they put up in order to keep people in. Chieftain Tank in detail was explained to us by the driver and the different members of the Chiefs and crew. We were shown around the different areas of the tank, how to work the main armament, the different submachine guns they have on it, the anti-biological warfare, the different sort of equipment they use in it, and we were taught how to drive it, etc. This is a commander's GPMG, a right, general purpose machine gun. Right. As you can see, the mechanism inside, right? Well, sightseeing in, in Berlin and looking around the shops, you get a lot of time to come down here on your own. So, you're going to have a good time then. My, my ambition, funny enough, was to go up in a helicopter. And I'm glad I have now, because it was brilliant at the, just flying up there in all the freedom, and like, a, like the birds do. Well, after these boys, I've only been on the valley most of their lives. And come to a place like Berlin, they'll remember it for the rest of their lives. Most of them won't, you know, will probably never come abroad again. So when they had a chance of coming to Berlin with the Army Cadet Force, you know, it was, it was a great thing for them. Down there is the Reichstag, the home of the old German parliament. And there's the famous Brandenburg Gate. As you can see, it's in East Berlin on the other side of the wall. And over there to the right is the site of Hitler's bunker where he committed suicide at the end of the war. Although a number of cadets do go into both the regular army and the TA, by far the majority do not. You must steer a straight line all the time. You have to look at the front. Keep pulling the which way you want. Our primary aim isn't to recruit for the regular army. Now, we've got to face the fact we are a youth organisation with a military bias, and it's inevitable that boys are going to come into the ACF who are already keen on the army. And from my point of view, where a boy is keen and is obviously going to make a first-class soldier, I would give him every encouragement. But I don't think it follows that every boy who comes up to us and says, Sir, I'd like to join the army, that we will encourage. For example, there might be a boy who perhaps his temperament doesn't suit. Or from the way we've observed him at camp, we know he's going to be a round peg in a square hole. And we would say to him, now look, you, you make sure before you do this, that if you decide in perhaps another year's time, the army will still be there. We put no pressure on any boy to go into the army. If he does, it's due to his own observations and perhaps meeting with the army, which is perfectly reasonable. So uh, I, I started coming along and, and found myself enjoying it. Uh, kept it up and get interested, got my, my first tape, uh, my Star 1, Star 2. 
and that's you. Once once you make a start, it's you just keep going for more. Uh, and my ambition became less for the army and more for for star four. Okay, fellas, you're on your own from now on. This is where I leave you. Corporal Jones, see you at five seven nine four six one thirteen hundred hours. Sergeant Hayes. 568453 at 1200 hours. Good luck. Cheero. What gives me the greatest satisfaction? I think when you find a boy who's gone through a bad patch and who you thought perhaps the future wasn't going to be too successful for him, when he comes along and sees you and says, how are you, sir? And you don't have to ask him any questions. You can see by his face, his manner, the way he's relaxed, that he's turned out a success. I think the, the great satisfaction is finding that when you've sweated blood at times and thought it was all in vain, to know that it wasn't.